what's up dudes and dudettes, Brad the Guitologist here. In this video we're going to take a look at this thing. This is uh, what I think is a 1960 General Electric Musophonic clock radio. It's in this kind of uh, really retro shell pink color which is pretty pretty trendy at the moment. Um, picked this up at an estate sale literally just down the street a little bit ago. Brought it home on my bike, and uh, I was out for a bike ride and didn't expect to even see a estate sale, but there was one there. They had some really cool old uh, 78s, which was kind of interesting, actually. Some of the 78s that I found there were pretty old, and they were some regional labels, so it'll be interesting going through those. I might get those out at some point in this video and show you what else I got there. They had some other records I kind of had to leave behind because I didn't have any money really with me. And I don't have much cash on me anyway. So I'm, I'm thinking I might go back next week when they actually open the estate sale. Uh, this week they weren't even open yet. Technically they were just getting the stuff out and I happened to be riding by. I asked them if they were having a yard sale and they said, um, well, no, we're having an estate sale, but it's you know you can come in if you want to so I was one of the first ones in there found this thing it was uh, uh, the lady said it worked but then she tried to demo it and it did not and I think I just might have realized two seconds ago as I was messing with it why it didn't work she said it had worked before and I believe her uh, and I think probably the reason is is that I was just you saw me messing with this. It's got a switch on it, but it goes in two different directions. And I see here now that it looks like uh, if you turn it one way, it's for phono, and if you turn it the other way, it's for radio. So maybe that's why it didn't make any noise. Let's see if it, well, it did make noise, but all it did was hum. Let's see if we can get it to do anything. I, I When I picked it up also, there was something loose inside, so it might there might be a tube that fell out. We'll have to see what's going on with that. The clock does run. I didn't check it for speed, so I don't know if it's running properly, but this also has an alarm. It's an alarm clock. It's got a sleep function, so you can actually have the radio on, and it'll turn itself off after a while. 41 and 20 there in Kansas goes. City. He was a playoff quarterback. He's a Pro Bowl quarterback at the end. And Mahomes also in college had a losing record with a wild... Yeah, that's why it wasn't working, I bet, because it was clicked on, but it was turned on to the phono side. That's why it wasn't working when she tried to turn it on earlier. And watched him play, just won the ACC. And I wonder what's... Uh, oh, okay, that's the on position. That's the on position for the radio. And then the alarm, uh, you can have the radio, I think, come on, and that will be your alarm. They've been at some moments, I think. But you can hear the hum. It's going to need, you know, recap and all of that stuff. We might recap this. I've got a video rendering off here to the side. Let's see why I'm even messing with this right now and defend what happened with the CDC and as the White House is continuing to make braggadocious comments including from the Chief of Staff Ron Klain about exactly what has uh, been going on uh, in the past few weeks of the Biden administration. We also have been discussing all of the craziness that has come out of the ongoing crisis surrounding the um, the, the Mar-a-Lago raid and what exactly is going to be transpiring there. Uh, and one thing that I think has certainly not gotten enough attention is how exactly wild things have gotten when it comes to all of these surgeries that are going on, Buck. If you've been paying a lot of attention, I have, to this craziness about, remember when they were saying early on, Oh, nobody under the age of 18 is having these gender affirmation surgeries. Nobody out there is making any sort of decisions that would lead to a 14 or... Okay, that, that'll be the clock set, that thing on the back. Uh, am I right? I think there's something broken off or missing that went up there. What What is it? It would have been like, the, what, the snooze button? It must be. 
that's probably what's rattling around inside of it. Is a, is a part of the snooze feature, is my guess. It's got this plastic cover on the front. I've seen a few online where this was missing. Um, pretty complete, pretty nice little radio, actually. Like I said, this is kind of a trendy. It's a trendy color, like a shell pink, really retro looking thing. Uh, let's see. This is a model. C422C and it looks like it is a All American 5 style. Or no, it's got a 6 tube. It's a 6 tube radio. Seems like it's tuning pretty well. Nah, I don't know. It is broad daylight, so uh, usually in broad daylight you don't pick up AM stations as easily as you would like in the middle of the night. Their genitals to be chopped off? No look past the Cooper Cup. The margins are so tight, you just gotta have about three or four throws at next level, and that's the difference. I mean, think about Stafford. Well, this should be an easy enough one to fix. Uh, the only real thing wrong with it is this this hum that we've got going on. Yeah, I kind of feel bad because, uh, like this, like I said, this thing was on, and uh, she tried to get it to work, and it wouldn't come up. And I was like, "Well, it probably needs service." I can hear the sixty. I can hear the hum, and. Uh, I said, you know, it's going to need a service. And I got about $10 off. I only gave 15 bucks for this thing. So, I mean, you know, I'm in it right. But, yeah, let's open it up and see what's going on inside of it. I know we've got some tubes in there. We'll take a look at the chassis and uh, go ahead and recap it. Okay. Looks like we got a couple of mismatched screws or maybe one of these is misplaced. It looks like somebody has definitely been in here at some point in the in the past, probably to change some tubes, I would guess. It looks like they misplaced a couple of the screws. Yeah, see, that's a totally different type of screw right there. I don't know if this is... Uh, maybe I ought to remove these two. That one was just barely hanging on. All right, yeah, I can definitely hear something is loose in here. Uh, probably, I'm sure we have to remove these. I didn't think about that. Man, please, I hope nobody glued them in. Oh, I think it's moving. This is always where you end up breaking something is when you're trying to get, you're trying to get stuff out. And then I think these have to come out too, probably. Uh, maybe not, we'll see. Yeah, you can hear something, whatever it is, is rattling around down in there. the shaft and then screw that out right yeah yeah that's right that little back that comes off like that okay that was what I was doing wrong okay so what is loose what is loose what is loose some kind of bracket 
is loose. Oh, that's exactly what that is. Look at there. That's the snooze button. And it's broken loose right here from the plastic. Okay. Well, having that flopping around in the chassis probably wasn't a great idea, was it? A big piece of metal just flopping around in here loose. Yeah, this ought to be pretty easy. This ought to be pretty easy. We just got one cap can here. The other caps are... Look like they're going to be fairly accessible from the top if I pull this thing out. Right there. And speaking of which, might as well go ahead and do that. Pull the chassis. I might have to desolder the speaker though. Ooh, shit. Wait, 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 wait. When you pull on the chassis, okay, watch. I'm going to try to pull on the chassis here to get this thing out. There's the dial cord up there. You see it right there? It's, ho it's hooked onto this little rail up front and when I try to pull it when I try to pull this out that's gonna it's gonna catch on that hmm let's go ahead and take this take this off so we don't break that look at that it's even got the little requisite white spots where somebody painted at some point and got uh, white paint on the top <laughs> yeah the oh man this is gonna be a pain in the ass if I have to move that what am I gonna do about that I do not want to restring a dial cord. Absolutely do not want to have to do that. It's just super low on my list of wants. Restringing dial cords. Look. You see it? Up in there. So when I turn it, that so that thing moves back and forth on this rail. And I've got to somehow get that off of there. I really don't see how to do that. I really don't, unless I have to take the ch rest of the chassis apart. There's two more screws right here. It looks like maybe if I take those off, I mean, the bottom half separates from the top half of this um, chassis, they're not chassis, but cabinet. I don't know if I even have to do that or want to do that, though. Let me ruminate on this for a little bit and figure out how I'm going to get that out of there. Because that's a big pain in the ass. Okay, so what I ended up doing in here is I moved, I moved that uh, tuner all the way to one end, and then uh, pulled the cord off of the little mounts for the cord. You can see it. You can see the mounts there. Uh, maybe you can. Maybe you can't. You can see the mounts right here on one end, and on the other end there's another pair of them. Well, the cord was just slipped through there just threaded through and now I've got to remove there's a bulb it looks like the bulb might be missing but there is a socket at least for a bulb um, that goes on that tuner and I've got to somehow get that off of there now without breaking that it should just slip on there but <laughs> That might be easier said than done, and I, and I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to film it. I'm going to loosen where these cables are kind of tied off up here. There's a piece of metal that's holding the, holding these cords and the wires, rather, in place. So we can get out here as much as possible. Okay. And kind of pry that out. Yep. There we go. There we go. Now this piece right here, I think, I think they installed that. There's a piece of plastic underneath it, and I don't know if it's supposed to come out, but it's it's loose on one of the ends. It doesn't appear to be loose on the other end though. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not, but this there's a little plastic shelf this this whole piece is loose over here like it's maybe broken off down here but the other end over here doesn't look like it's broken off so it's not moving i'm not going to try to force it i'm just going to leave that well enough alone on that 
Man, I think I'm going to have to take this whole damn thing. Ugh. Jeez. Am I going to take that whole stupid clock out also? I think I might have to take the clock out too. To get all this out. I really don't want to do that. Let me see if I can maybe... Maybe I can just do this. Yeah, I can just do this then. Okay. That's definitely preferable to taking that whole clock apart. Set it up like this maybe. Is that going to work? Nope, probably not. We'll figure it out. First, first thing I want to do is remove the can capacitor over here. Uh, we've got uh, two leads to desolder on the can capacitor. Uh, you can see one of them clearly. The other one's kind of hidden right there. I believe that's the one I need to do. Those two right there. So we'll desolder those, drop the can cap out. I want to see if I can restuff the can cap. Uh, if not, it's not a huge deal. I'll just... Um, I'll tack in on top a replacement capacitor. So that's where I want to start. And obviously this thing is full of uh, other capacitors that are paper and wax. And we're going to go ahead and replace all of those as well. So, okay, I'm going to use the new solder sucker. One of the uh, channel fans sent me for this. This is an engineer model SSO2. This thing, I've, I've, I've tried this thing a couple times now and it, it works beautifully. This is a very cool solder sucker. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to pick up one of these. I highly recommend it. This is a nice solder sucker. I think they got this lead over here bent on the through hole. Yeah, slightly bent. Well, she's not wanting to come out. I do have a third lead, that's why I have a third lead, I didn't realize it's a third lead right there. That would make sense, it's a, it's a dual capacitor. Now it'll come out. Yeah, there we go. There we go. This is one of those where the leads are on the outside, that was what was confusing me, because it looked like it was outside the, where the can could possibly be, but the leads are tacked on the outside of the can. I'm to get some more light in this room, aren't I? Okay, these are both at 150 working volts DC. Uh, one of them's 100 microfarad and one is at 50. I think I've got those on hand. 472 is the manufacturer. 1960, the 30th week of 1960 on this thing. So th this actually shouldn't be too hard to hollow out. I think I could probably heat this up and get the core out of it. My heat gun is at 240 degrees. Basically, I'm just going to try to melt all this out of here. I should probably get something to melt this on too, shouldn't I? To catch all the wax. I might just abandon this idea. It's uh it's probably gonna be more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, this isn't gonna be one that I could slip out easily. Probably what I would have to do is slice this, like find a spot where there's no riding or whatever, and slice it along the side and peel it. 
and I just don't see that as being worth the time or effort. Uh, I'm just going to get some discrete components and and put in this thing. But we do at least learn that it's from 1960. Okay, so this is going to have to spread out. I'm using some uh, reclaimed caps that were reclaimed from some other project. I don't know what came out of something. They're still good caps, but they were not useful in whatever I pulled them from. Okay. Try to line it up where we can get our leads bent properly. Something like that. Get out there. I think this one is going to probably fit on the bottom. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think what we'll do with this one is we will stick the positive lead straight down in. Alright. Grab it on there a little bit with a physical connection and get that soldered on. Okay, so here's our new caps. Here's the negative lead that we need to uh, tie to the chassis. So what we're going to do, we're just going to clip that and we'll get a wire extended piece of wire to go down to the chassis where it needs to. I wanted a nice uh, solid core piece of wire here because it's just going to help stabilize that so it doesn't jostle around too much. Right, so there's the new capacitors soldered in. Uh, the power capacitors are done. Let's go ahead and uh, get to work on the other capacitors. We need to find where they are on this and desolder them all one at a time. There's, I mean, they're all going to have to go. These, all these paper and wax, that pyramid right there is is going to be bad. You know, none of these capacitors are really good at this point. I can tell you that for certain. Anytime you're redoing caps on boards like this, there's always a couple of concerns. Number one, you don't want to hold your heat on these pads so long that it uh, that it starts to lift the pads because they will lift and fail on you. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, you get your solder on there pretty good, uh, where it you know covers up the entirety of the lead that's poking through. Um, if you do bend your leads over to get a better better physical grip, which is a good idea, um, you don't want to do it in such a way where it bends over and shorts onto uh, something else. Um, that's not as much of a concern on this one as it might be on some equipment. Everything's spaced pretty far apart on this, but on some stuff, you know, there's going to be stuff right beside it. And if you bend the leads over, you want to make sure you're not shorting on to something else uh, 0.047 microfarad on that one it's a Dumont I mean it's a it's a certainty that that's not a good cap I mean it's a paper and wax cap we'll hit all these one by one and get all the paper and wax caps out of here like we've done with this one and I think this is probably gonna work just fine after that we might test some tubes and see if anything is weak and needs to be replaced but um, maybe touch up the alignment if we feel like it needs it, but I kind of doubt it's gonna. It, it seemed like it came in pretty well. 
you know, obviously it just had all the buzz and stuff going on. It probably and it's going to improve it further still to have capacitors that aren't leaky. So, okay, so here's the entire thing recapped at this point. Um, it's got a lot of dust and stuff in there. Uh, I'm going to pull the tubes and clean all the tube sockets like I've done those back there. Um, and also just kind of sweep and dust out the thing and vacuum all the dust out. Then at that point, we will probably... Oh, also the um, the pointer for the, for the dial fell out. So I'm going to have to reinstall that. And probably when I reinstall everything, I'll have to slide it down to... Um, get the station correct but that's no big deal but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sweep dust this thing out vacuum all the dust out uh, and clean some sockets and I think we'll be able to give this thing a test I think I've practically I think I've practically got this thing ready to go we've cleaned all the sockets we've replaced all the capacitors it probably would fire up and just go fine right here like it is right now go ahead and clean the pot And you remember this one has a center switch. So the switch is actually in the center. You can switch it one direction and it will turn the radio on. You switch it the other direction, it turns the phono on. All right, I think we're ready to reassemble this thing, get it back in the cabinet. Actually, that's not true. Before we reassemble this thing, uh, I have some cabinet issues to address here. There is a, uh, okay, there's a couple of broken things. This. Well, you can see it right. Well, that right there is definitely broken now, you can see. I don't know if it's broken or if it is always like that. I think maybe this just gets held on with the screws. I believe that to be the case. This is the rail that holds this piece on. And yeah, it was never meant to be glued. I was wrong about that. It just it does just kind of pop out. So, no big deal there. We can stick that back in there. Um the part that we do have to worry about, though, is this right here. That was the snooze button. We need to do something about that, glue that back on. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy and glue the little post back on that holds the snooze button in place. And also, I want to wipe out this cabinet. Look at all the soot and everything that's inside of this cabinet. Okay, but so by some miracle, this piece was still in the cabinet. It was still attached to the snooze button. The snooze button is supposed to go down in that hole right there, and it pivots on this, but this had broken free, and it looks like, looks like somebody has tried to re-glue it maybe in the past, like it's got some old glue on it. Yeah, it actually does. So I'll come in here and, and just scrape around a little bit, remove any old glue that will get in our way here, and we will epoxy it back on there. Scrape the old glue. Rough up this bit a little bit too, because this has to attach to the bottom side. That little bracket. So in addition to scraping off the glue, that's also uh, putting some little scratches and grooves into the uh, surface that we want to glue to and it should help it adhere to that. I'll make sure we have everything ready and prepared before we start mixing up this epoxy because this is very short-lived. This is short work time stuff. I'm not too worried about putting too much um, because I can, I can always come back in and kind of shave off what I don't need. That's got the epoxy on it. And like I said, I've got more than I need on there, which is okay. Uh, I'm not that concerned about that because I can always come in with a little Dremel and sand off the epoxy that I don't need after the fact. Terrified of COVID. Like, 
Thirty percent of them. I mean, we're two and a half years in, and they were like, "This is a big move because it's gone from forty-three percent who are very afraid of COVID to thirty percent." But Buck, the number one way to know whether somebody's really afraid of COVID is how liberal they are. It's amazing that this has ended up being the way that the world goes. And I, I wonder on some. This is a misuse of the word liberal. I hate that. People misuse that word. If you're a classical liberal, you believe in liberty. You don't believe in forcing people to really do anything. And these people who were forcing pe wanting to force people to wear masks and take shots, which is just, I mean, that's fabulously fucking egregious. That is not liberalism. That is, I mean, you can call it leftism if you want. That's, I prefer that term. But uh, to describe people as being liberal uh, who believe in that kind of shit is just that's a misnomer if ever there was one but now what I'm gonna have to do is put this back in the position where it'll be on the correct station so that's what I'm doing right now we're dialing a station and like I wasn't alone when you go through it and haven't seen them up close that's a really really good roster um, okay so this is the sports station it's always easy to identify because they'll be talking about sports uh, this is 790 it claims that they cut now the so, to win in the league, you got to have the eight, you know, eight to ten blue chip players. You we want this somewhere right in here. Good players. I know that you can do this electronically if you just adjust it, but I'd rather just do this physically since I have this off anyway. It makes more sense for me to do do it that way. Okay, so this thing is uh, finally done, and holy shit, was this a pain in the ass to get back together? Oh my god, I think it was probably twice as hard to get back together as it was to get apart. I should have filmed all of that nonsense, probably just for com comedic value, you know, of me sitting here with parts going, how in the f do you get this thing back together? Absolutely absurd. But anyway, it is back together now. Uh, in the process of getting it back together, or at some point during the process, I managed to knock loose a little tiny piece of the the hand right there you can see the hour hand it's got a little tiny piece knocked out of it now i think that's the piece right there so yeah kind of a shame there i i know you can actually repaint those um you can replace that stuff um but yeah i'll leave that to the next guy whoever wants to play with it after me at some point down the road, I'm probably just going to put this thing on my nightstand and use it. Um, it's drawing about 2.7 watts in uh, just clock mode with everything else off. So that's what you can kind of expect this thing to draw. Well, we got 50 milliamps of current. And like I said, 2.7 watts. Uh, that goes up pretty precipitously when you turn the radio on you turn that on and we go from we go up to about 0.22 amps and up to about 24 watts of power and if i turn all these lights off you'll be able to see the uh like what it looks like kind of at night uh like if it's on your if it's on your night you see the little is it, there anything? You can see the little light that's shining through down here. It doesn't have a, a dial light, um, but again, it does have the little, I think it's like the uranium paint in each one of the little dots, and of course it has the paint on the hands. So if you look over in the middle of the night, you can see what kind of what time it is. Um, but the light is weird because the light is actually under a piece of plastic, and it's just shining through translucently through that plastic. Um which kind of confused me at first. I was like, how's this light supposed to work if it's all covered up? And then, well, well, that's how it works. But anyway, this thing sounds pretty great. City on a hill. Really, really impressed with this, the, the speaker, honestly. I've heard of. Billions of people tell me about that. You got one. Just a nice sounding speaker. I don't have to do anything. I mean, it's gotta, be, it's gotta be a difference in the public opinion versus, it's like the insiders versus the outsiders, right? Like, we have a view of the Jets roster. And yeah, I don't know any of these shows, and I'm not. Two, three page testimony. You type it up, post it on our bulletin board. And when you post it on our bulletin board, our deacons and other leaders in the church will all look at. 
of strength through power. He did all of it. He <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and test the um, the alarm. You know, this is pretty old school. A lot of you guys will remember this. You know, you've got that little thing that you twist in the back. And here's the uh, alarm set, that little red dial right there. You can see it kind of moving around. You see it there? I set the clock at about uh, 550. And so far, it is dead on. Let's test out the alarm. So what I want to do, we'll set this to alarm setting so now the alarm is set ready to go uh, let's say you're going to bed for the evening and you want to have some radio to sleep to you can turn this on like this it'll take a minute for the radio to warm up but you'll be able to listen to radio and this little thing right here will count kind of count down until it on 71 southbound, a little slow because of a stalled out semi near the Barber Lane overpass. Our next report in 10 minutes. I'm Bobby Ellis, News Radio 840 WHAS. So, you know, you're listening to radio or whatever to sleep, and then when this thing finally winds down, it'll shut off. Presumably at some point, some point, hopefully you're already asleep, but you can set it up to 60 minutes. Um, and then in the morning, when the alarm is going to go off. Here's what happens. So I'm going to turn the clock dial now. We'll turn it up to just past 7 o'clock, 7.15 or so. It should, or 7.30, I guess is what I set it for. If you watch this hand real closely, you'll see it kind of trigger. Okay, here any second now. You see it triggered. Okay, there it went. Okay, so it triggered. And what's going to happen is the radio is going to come on. So the way this alarm works is it's a it's kind of a soft wake up. On a hot tub or swim spa. This weekend only. Friday through Monday. Kentucky International Convention. Okay, so, so the alarm works like this. The radio comes on. So after about 10 minutes or so, it goes to this monst monstrous sound, and then so you can reset the uh, you can reset the snooze, and then if you leave it longer, let's see. Uh, I keep forgetting which is which here. I'm turning the wrong damn thing. You know, if you leave it longer, then let's say you you know you go back to sleep for another ten minutes or so. Oop! Man, this thing will just keep doing that every ten minutes or so. Now, all the while, the radio is still going. Four point seven stars, saying things like "best product I've ever used" and "amazing." So you got two forms of, of thing waking you up. You know, you, it starts you off with a little bit of radio, just kind of calmly, okay, time to get up now. And then that abyss, that terrible alarm starts going off until you turn it to the off position, and then everything turns off. So that's how that works. I mean, this is, it's kind of a cool little clock radio, and it looks cool. It looks really uh, of the time period. I mean, I really like the look of the thing. It's got that... It's got that whole, you know, the fins coming out. You know, it's got the whole mid-century kind of feel. You know, it would look right at home on a mid-century table or something like that. Uh, in a mid-century style home. Love the color of it. You know, kind of the shell pink and everything. So really, really just a cool clock radio. But uh, man, you don't want to have to take one of these things apart and put it back together. Jeez, that was a, that was quite a chore. Okay. Uh, trying this thing with a with a guitar, it's not really. I don't. It's not going to sound good for sure. Got a lo lot of low end hum. Um, and I and I think that's just down to the fact that probably this thing is uh, because by this time, by the time they made this, they already had the RIAA standard, uh, which is a standard of shaping the tone uh, so that it works with. Um, the output of uh, uh, phono records or turntables of the, of the time. So, 
It's just basically the way that LPs and or 45s or whatever, whatever records they had at the time were mastered so that they would be more universal because before that, everybody, every record label basically had their own standard. And uh, this was a way of uh, making all the standards kind of universal and they would match the amplifiers to that standard. And that's this probably what's going on here is that we just got a problem with that. Maybe it's also noise related. I'll try to reverse the plug here and just see. Right now it's not shocking me, but we'll see if it shocks me when I reverse the plug. Still, it's still. Honestly, I did not expect greatness <laughs> out of this thing. Okay, so I wanted to do one more clip of this thing. I've moved it up to my daughter's bedroom. I'm gonna let her use it, but uh, getting a lot more stations up here in her room, uh, just because, I guess, because it's higher up in the house. So I'll show you the, the two main stations I was able to get downstairs. Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi. So that one right there. Kansas, Nebraska, Illinois. So I think we're gonna be just fine on that front, and for Oklahoma State, those who are not violent are sending in SWAT teams to pick them up and bring them to Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, inflation is rising almost 9%. Now we'll go, we'll go down this way. We are in a recession. You must read a new Swiss American report on it. Really break this open Chippy. in this ball game. You're not, you can't expect to hold the Cardinals to one run every night. But if you can score when you have the opportunity, and the opportunity right now has presented itself for the Reds, they played it two here in the inning. So far, this match has been incredible. He's already got the assist. I might have credited Musha Galusa with that assist. In fact, it was Amadou Dia. These are all these stations were completely non-existent downstairs. As the left back for Louisville City this year, and he has played in a number of terrific-looking balls. 23 minutes gone by, and that goal that was assisted by Dia, scored by Ray Serrano, is goal one to nothing in favor of Louisville City. Captain Red. That's coming in really good right there. Listen to the bass. Sunny, it is terrific. With those warm temperatures, we're in the low 80s. The humidity is nice and low. It's a great way to end meteorological summer. Fortnight, the sky will be clear. Season of the pool, we're in the upper 50s. Your day tomorrow, beginning a meteorological fall. Sunshine, warm, low humidity. We're in the mid-80s. Mostly sunny on Friday, upper 80s, then partly to eventually mostly cloudy Saturday. Scattered storms and highs in the mid-80s. I'm Chief Meteorologist Bill Mack on Lexington's News Traffic and Weather Station. Oh, that's a Lexington station. Point three FM, WVLK. That's a pretty decent distance. Thinking quickly about things you actually talk about in the real world. You'll really see a difference in how you can speak and how conversational you can be in just a few weeks. That is just a lesson. You can listen to podcasts, play games, watch videos. You can even take live online classes. Or nice to find that uh, oldie station right there and it means there's actually something to listen to <laughs> Alabama 
and then Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code GREAT for a 25 cents. Okay, so now we're going to go up from those two stations that we found great downstairs. For 25 Lots more this way, too. As Paul preached, looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed, and he called to him in a loud voice, Stand up! The man jumped to it. After a in Charleston, particularly in the month of August, he, he overall was five for five with a three. Spanish, Spanish music. I play a whole lot, and then I think those guys really bring a, a dimension to our team. You know, Jace Tevis, another defensive lineman that's brand new that came from from Cal Berkeley. So, uh, just those guys have played a lot of football other places, but now they're here. Israel's distinction from the nations. Um, if you read the Old Testament, a lot of the law is very concerned about um, the people of Israel not mixing with other nations. Um, so that category of illegitimate, it, it's not just about somebody born outside of wedlock, it's also somebody who's like, you know, if you marry a foreigner. <laughs> and, and CBS News Brief. A temporary pump at a water plant is helping get as much water as possible to people in Jackson, Mississippi, where thousands are struggling. People are afraid of, they're running to bordering cities. Lots of stations on top of one another right in here. This one shot into left center field by Hopkins. That's down for a base hit. Madris over to cut it off. Hopkins has himself a base hit. His seventh as a member of the bats. And this is sixth game. And he is on with one man out. Matter to the dinner table. So much of what goes on in Washington, D.C. has nothing to do with my listeners. I'm on the road. And I think most teams, when they approach a series like this, are just hoping they get a one on the road, ideally two. But yeah, if you're Connecticut, you wanted to get that game. That was probably maybe the best shot you're going to get, at least when the series is in Chicago. But... Quita sal. Aceite de oliva. Yo le pongo aceite de oliva. Another Spanish speaking station? I had no idea if this was even down here. Buenas tardes, todos ustedes. Les saluda López Dóriga. Hoy en el noticiero, le tengo la siguiente noticia. Hoy en la encuesta le hago la pregunta. The lights due to construction. The interstate reduced to two lanes, causing major delays. The project and delays will be in effect for the next two years. So that's quite a few more stations uh, that I can pick up up here at the top of the house that I cannot pick up downstairs. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, this video on this what I think is about a 1960 General Electric clock radio. If you've enjoyed this, hit subscribe down below. And for now, we will see y'all later.